What's up, my people? This is Showbiz the Dope. All right, man, look. All right, man, look. Jamel Charlo. Great KO victory over Coda last night in the third round. But is Jamel Charlo fighting balls? That's the question. Coffee. Is Jamel Charlo fighting bombs? Good question. Let's do it like this. Two fights ago, Jamel Charlo, he fought Austin Trout to a majority decision. Wait a minute. I'm not saying that Austin Trout is a great fighter. I'm just saying two fights ago, he fought Austin Trout to a majority decision. Next fight against Tony Harrison, who he fought and lost in a decision, okay? Which I think Jamel Charlo should have gotten denied. But needless to say, he lost. They set up the rematch. Tony Harrison, he pulls out because of an ankle injury. They replace him with Jorge Coda. Okay, power in both hands, good decent chin, Mexican style, go straight forward. He's not Willie Pep at all, okay? They knew that Jamel Charlo had the hand speed, the power, he had the aggression, willing to uh, punch during the exchange. They feel if Jamel Charlo does what he's supposed to do, he's going to KO Coda. That's why they threw him in there, right? He's supposed to KO Coda, right? Let's see what Mike Tyson says in the Undisputed Truth, talking about his career. Let's do it like this. Here we go right here. Mitch Green was a well-respected fighter then. He was a four-time Golden Gloves champion, and he had been undefeated until he lost his decision in 1985 to Trevor Burbick for the USBA title. Tyson beat him decision. His next fight, Reggie Gross, was my next target. He was a tough fighter they called the Spoiler because he had upset some good fighters, including Burt Cooper and Jimmy Clark, who was a great American Olympian. Tyson goes on to say, my next two opponents seem to be going down in caliber. Maybe Jimmy and Kayton, his managers, just wanted me to get some more one-round knockouts after those two decisions. What Mike Tyson is saying is his manager saw him go through two decisions and said, you know what, it's time to throw in some knockouts here. Why? Because we're building a Hercules. On top of that, we want to build up your confidence. You went through two decisions. Maybe you're starting to question how good you are. So let's throw some guys in there that you can knock out, look good against. Because boxing is 90% mental. Okay, you think Sugar Ray Leonard, every, every one of his fights was against Hagler, was against Hearns, was against Duran, was against Wilfred, Red, Wilfred Benitez. No, there were some little fights in between then. You can't have a blood and guts and glory fight every fight. You can't do it. Even Sugar Ray Robinson, the GOAT. He fought Jake LaMotta, yeah. He fought Carmen Bastillo, but not every fight. There were little fighters in there, okay? So he can look good, and he can build up his confidence again. He didn't even get around to fighting the Superman Tony Zale. Charlo, he just got out of two decisions. He needed this fight. Boxing is 90% mental, okay? Nobody fight world beaters every fight. We need to understand boxing a little bit more. Like I said, with Triple G fighting Steve Rolls. Look here, that was to build his confidence. He got a new trainer. He's been gone for a while. He's getting up in age, a little long in the tooth. Let's see if he can knock out Steve Rolls. Throw Steve Rolls up in there. He knocks him out. He did what he's supposed to do. I often said, if you fight a guy that you're supposed to knock out, please do it. Because that's what separates the great fighters from the average fighters. Canelo, Canelo Alvarez, yeah, he's supposed to knock out Fielding. So he did it. And it was exciting. That's what you do. Jamel Charlo, no one thought Coda was going to beat him. But hey, maybe this is the year of the upsets. Let's see what happens. Coda himself bringing up Andy Ruiz. He got power in both hands. Mexican style fighter. Let's see what happens. Boop, boop, boop. Knockout. Okay, third round. Hey. Charlo did what he's supposed to do. And what did Charlo do afterwards? He did that, right? It built his confidence back. He got his swag back. Now let's throw him in there against Tony Harris. Tony Harrison, he coming off a bum ankle. 
He's like, ah, oh, I hope I'm as good as I was. I hope I can move like I was able to do when I did beat Charlo. You see how boxing is 90% mental? That's what you're supposed to. I've been around boxing a long time. Many of you show business partners know exactly what I'm talking about. Show biz the don't. Is he fighting bums? Joe Lewis, even he had the bum of the month club. I'm out.